five. Okay. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And uh, David, what, uh, first of all, what year are we in this, this week? I think we're around 1984 we're again. Around 1984, hence our 1984 magazines. And um, what are we going to be reviewing today? <laughs> Look at this. A masterpiece of engineering. This is a... Iowa ADF 660. A classic cassette deck. It is. With yeah. this beautiful piano layout. Don't make them like that anymore, do they? They don't. <laughs> they don't make cassette decks anymore. No, such a shame, isn't it? Such a beautiful bit of kit as well. And look, I'm going to start. I'm going to ask you the million dollar question. Is there still room for this in a modern day hi-fi system? Now we are actually in the 21st century. Yeah, well, there's uh, there's plenty of room for it in my system. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I use this on a daily basis, pretty much. Um, you do have an uh, extraordinary amount of cassettes as well. Yes. Which, you, which you've sort of saved over the yes. years. And, um, you know, actually, to be fair, a lot of them are probably extremely valuable um, these days. Yes, well, so, um, I brought a special one along. We, we have, we have one here. So, uh, look at this, I've got a Dan Eisenhandler Winter Collection. So, Dan, if you're watching, uh, be nice to see you again and thank yeah. you for pre-recording this lovely cassette for us yeah. um, on a genuine WH Smith uh, C15 cassette <laughs> there we are nothing but the best for us no and see we've got a little private note in here look have fun on your something I can't even read Dan's writing but there we are nothing's changed there but this is a uh, <coughs> this is one of our many friends who are in bands yes so uh, all of our friends seem to be in bands so I will be demonstrating this uh, um, this lovely unit uh, with playing these, a pre-recorded cassette with these gorgeous VU meters at the top which Absolutely. I'm sure will start bouncing any second that yeah. Dan's, uh, Dan's vocals come through yeah um, well, um, Dan always used long lead-ins with his pre-recorded cassettes <laughs> uh, even going into his later twist twangle uh, years um, he was uh, definitely uh, a, 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 an audiophile because of course the early part of the tape the beginning of the tape doesn't sound as good so, well, there you go. It's now, Absolutely. The music has now that. started, Mike. Isn't that gorgeous? So. It's so nice to see. I feel very nostalgic about this deck. And this was, um, uh, in 1984, this was an incredibly good cassette deck, wasn't it? It was, yeah. uh, it was a, a Nakamichi beta. Yeah, I, I think it was. So um, I, I think in, in the kind of hi-fi world, um, everyone makes a big deal about Nakamichis. Um, and they were lovely cassette decks. I don't think we'll dispute that. Mm. Um, but there were, you know, as they say, viewers, other brands are available. And Iowa, I think, was one of the great cassette deck brands, weren't they? Very much so. Um, yes. And they made yeah. a lot of cheap, uh, budget, affordable stuff. They made some high-end yes. stuff as well. And their high-end stuff was, uh, you know, kind of snapping at the heels of Nakamichi, um, but for, you know, half the price, basically. Absolutely. Now, clearly, this still produces some great sound. Yeah. Um, and obviously it's source dependent so if you've got a good recording um, then you can still get you know some great results from a classic cassette deck but I've just got a question here which is if I were to buy one of these from eBay now um, and it just needs a little bit of TLC maybe the belts replacing or you know um, a bit of a bit of love then are they still serviceable yeah actually there's quite a few people who uh, service cassette decks now who seem to be popping up out of the woodwork um, because the format seems to be taking off again. Mm. Um, a number of bands are now releasing their stuff on cassette. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's kind of, it's strangely having a, a second life. There is a, an actual cassette revival. Uh, and now that we're doing this, you know, it's going to be even more. Absolutely, yes, yes. So uh, it means two people will be buying them. <laughs> exactly. Of me. Yes. Um, so, yeah. yeah. The person who's got one of these advertised on eBay is going to be thrilled by this review. <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, you say that, uh, for, at, the, at the time we're recording this um, Hi-Fi Riff, then Tears for Fears have only in the last couple of weeks bought out their new album, The Tipping Point, and that's also available on cassette, yeah. just to sort of reinforce exactly what you're saying. So yeah. there's a market for it. People are, people are buying them. Um, cassette has a lovely sound, doesn't it? It has its own sound. It's very yeah. analogue. You know, obviously, you know, this is this deck went to great extremes to reduce any tape hiss. Uh, Dolby BC and HX Pro yep. on this, yep. um, you know, which is all great stuff to try and, um, you know, uh, 
I always used to turn them off and just put up with his because I always thought I got more dynamics that way. Um, but uh, but obviously they went to great efforts to, to make yeah. the most out of that. Um, but actually, I think that just for me, cassette still has a lovely, lovely sound. Yeah, and, uh, I think for me, the interesting thing is um, the with the Iowa, I think uh, the sort of 83, 84 generation was when cassettes started getting really good. Mm. So obviously mm. the format itself came out in 1963 and it was a dictaphone uh, format only. It was only for speech. Um, and with, I think it's 4.75 centimeters per second, it's pretty slow mm. compared to reel to reel, um, you know, which is often at least uh, four times or sometimes, uh, you know, eight times that. Um, and um, but by the early to mid 80s the technology for, for cassettes was definitely improving um, and uh, you could get very very impressive uh, figures and the reason why we're covering this one in particular is it was an absolute giant killer mm. in its day um, its, its rival was the Nakamichi BX100 which is a good cassette deck and you can still pick them up on eBay for a few hundred quid um, but this had a lot, a lot more features and actually better specs. Mm. Um, so it had a lot. Its wow and flutter was was very low. Um, I think it was a um, very uh, impressive, zero point zero two eight percent, which is vanishingly low. Ten years earlier, you'd be lucky if you got zero point one percent wow and flutter, which was much higher. But you um, know, yeah. it's amazing, isn't it, how difficult all of that is to achieve because a cassette in itself is inherently flawed. I mean, you've explained one of the reasons because it goes very slowly, but also how thin and tiny it is. Yeah. And you've got to bear in mind also, you know, that's, that's we're only using half the, the width of that because obviously you can turn it over yeah, yeah. and use both sides. Yeah. Um, so to get any information at all in any sort of hi-fi reproduction is really difficult. So, you know, incredible engineering here. And I think these guys must have really known exactly what they were doing when they were producing these yeah, decks. exactly. It was kind of almost micro-mechanical engineering. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, by the early to mid-80s, they were getting fantastic, proper hi-fi specs out of it. Um, I think um, if you think that CD's got a frequency response of uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, plus or minus one, one dB, I think that was the red book spec for CD. Um, this has, again, got a, uh, with metal tape, um, 20, to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz minus 3 dB. So it's near CD mm, quality. Yes. Um, uh, from a, ti from a, from a really tiny difficult source to get. tape format. Yeah, 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 absolutely. In fact, look, I'm loving this. I, I wonder if we can see this. We've got the original manual here, look, that, uh, that, uh, the brochure, yeah. which you'd have picked up from... You know your local Lasky's or whatever exactly. it was back in the day. Fantastic, yeah. love that. So that shows Lots the of, um, ADF nine ninety, oh, which let's, was the let's flagship see. one. That was the yes. hardcore Nakamichi yeah. killer. Yeah, yeah, beautiful um, machine. Yeah, beautiful fancy. machine. Fantastic. That's that's awesome. So, um, I, I just wonder. I mean, obviously, okay, we're saying there's a little bit of a cassette revival. We're saying that some bands are actually reissuing some of their uh, recordings on cassette. If I wanted to buy a classic cassette deck nowadays, yeah. uh, such as your lovely um, 660 here, yeah. how much is that going to set me back on eBay? So it obviously depends on the condition and so on, but I got this for about a year or two ago for 200 quid, <laughs> which is crazy. I think prices yeah. are going up a bit. Now. Sure, sure. But uh, and, and then, you know, maybe pay the same again to have it completely refurbed and new belts and all that stuff yeah, if you needed to. Absolutely. There, there are, you know, uh, the belt kits and things are readily available again on eBay. There's quite a few people popping up who do cassette deck servicing. Uh, maybe they were too embarrassed to admit it 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So it's not quite as impractical as you think. He says heaving this massive thing <laughs> around, um, but it, it uh, you know if you're into, I mean the re the big attraction for me as well is that if you're a vinyl guy, uh, you can record your own vinyl directly. Obviously, it keeps it all in the analog domain. Mm. So and then if you if like me, you have a car cassette player um, in your ancient car. Uh, you can drive along, motor along on Her Majesty's Highway, listening to beautiful analogue sound. And you can do mixtapes yeah. for your mates. You can, yeah. And your potential girlfriends. Exactly. They won't be able to play them. No. 
but just remember, kids, you know, that, that could be a, a way in. You know. It could be, especially if you... Know, and here's a cassette deck I bought on eBay. Especially if you so. drive around in a Triumph TR7. Exactly. <laughs> so. Excellent. So look, um, let's do, a, let's do a, uh, Mike and Dave's uh, retro hi-fi riffometer score. Out of 10, what are you going to give your lovely Iowa cassette deck here? I'm going to give it a 10. Oh, you see, you're just, you're just nostalgic. Like, you really are. Yeah, I know. Normally, on a normal reformatory, I kind of do an R and spend half an hour trying to decide whether it's an eight point five or a, or an eight. Um, but yeah, this is a straight ten for me. Um, it's a beautiful machine. Um, there are still, they're still reasonably w uh, available if you look around. Um, the bigger ones in the uh, in the range, like the nine nineties. They're knocking on uh, for about five, six hundred quid now at the 990. Uh, I've also got a 770 as well, you know, just for uh, rainy days, as it were. And uh, there you go, that's the 770. You're so sad. So uh, <laughs> that's got your uh, fluorescent uh, uh, meters there and um, the data automatic tape um, setting uh, mm. optimization system. Uh, it's another acronym I can't remember, so... <laughs> But would yeah. you would you buy a used cassette deck from this man? <laughs> I would. Yeah, I'd sell them all to myself and buy them back again. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, look, so. I'm I'm um, I I share your enthusiasm. I'm one of the. I think in one of our upcoming riffs, we should do my lovely brand new, never been taken out of the box Sony Walkman Pro. Um, and we should we should uh, do a riff on that. What do you think? And we'll cover that as Have well. Have you got so. a brand new, never been taken out of the box, Walton Pro? Brand new, never been taken out of the box, box, box Walton <laughs> Pro. I know, because I'm I'm equally as sad as you, and I, and because I'm I'm happy to say that I'm going to give it a ten as well, because wow. uh, I think we need to bring this format back. I think exactly. it's much loved, and just that lovely tactile nature. And do you know, even you putting the cassette in and pressing play, and that little clunk it makes. Uh, just when the captains come in and it fires up, it just pours back the memories. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, mixtapes should be back in fashion. They should. So yeah. there we are. Look, there's our lovely retro uh, Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I hope you've enjoyed that one. We've really enjoyed making this one. And, uh, and thank you very much indeed for watching. We'll see you at the next one. Thanks a million. Bye.